My name is Banish Dev. I'm a Solutions Architect Analytics Specialist at AWS. Today, I'll show you the step-by-step -step process on how to simplify Amazon Redshift RA3 migration evaluation using simple replay utility as documented in this AWS blog on the same subject. As part of this demo, I'll show the automated performance comparison between a DS2 and RA3 Amazon Redshift cluster by replaying my past workloads using Redshift Simple Replay Utility. Redshift Simple Replay Utility is an EC2 Python based open source project on GitHub that allows customers to replay their past workloads on Redshift. Customers use it to perform different what if analysis, like what would happen if they change the node type or node count of their current Redshift cluster, or they may like to test different workload management settings on Redshift. A prerequisite to use Redshift Simple Replay Utility is to enable audit logging on the Redshift cluster, which logs all statements run on the cluster to an Amazon S3 bucket. Simple Replay process can then extract all individual SQL statements from these logs to another S3 bucket and then replay them for your desired time interval in the past. One of the common use case that you see with customers is to use simple replay utility for evaluation of Amazon Redshift RA3 instances. They use this tool to quickly evaluate how their workload would perform on RA3 instances as compared to their current configuration on DC2 or DS2, which are the older generation of Redshift instances. I will be demoing the same today. Let's go to my AWS console and move to Amazon Redshift service. Here, I have a two node DS2.8x large cluster and I would assume that this is my production Redshift cluster, which I would like to migrate to RA3. This cluster is already enabled with audit logging, meaning all Redshift statements are being logged on this Amazon S3 bucket. If I want to resize my cluster to RE3, I can simply do a resize operation from AWS console. And as I'm moving from a two node DS2.8x large cluster, Redshift is recommending me to move to RE3 for Excel four nodes. I can simply select the node type and node count and hit resize cluster now which would move my cluster from DS2 to RA3 within 10-15 minutes. But I may like to test my past workload performance using an RA3 instance first before making the final decision and the final move. For that, I would use the Simple Replay Utility. In Simple Replay Utility GitHub page, we have a folder CloudFormation. In that, we have two templates, one for extract and another one for replay. As detailed in the blog, I need to run the extract process on the same account where my source Redshift cluster is hosted. The replay process may run on a different account, but we recommend running it in the same account as it makes replaying copy statements a lot easier. Here are the resources used in simple replay extract process, which is installed on an EC2 instance. This instance reads data from the source Redshift cluster or its audit logging bucket and then extracts the statements to an Amazon S3 bucket. I'll call it extract bucket. We used AWS step functions and AWS Lambda to run the end-to-end -end orchestration. Now, let me start with the CloudFormation template for the extract process. I'll navigate to CloudFormation in my AWS console and then click create stack with new resources. Before that, I would need to save the CloudFormation templates. So I'll download both these files, extract.yaml and replay.yaml. Now, in CloudFormation, I'd need to select this file, which I downloaded from GitHub. I'll first start with the extract.yaml file. I need to provide a stack name. I'll say redshift extract. Then I need to put the source cluster endpoint, which I can copy 
from my Redshift console. I'll copy paste the endpoint here. I'll go with the default option for all these parameters and then move to start and end time section. I'd like to replay my workload on 5.29, 17.30 to 18.30 UTC. Let me input the same and click next. I need to acknowledge creation of IAM resources and then click create stack. It would take about 5 minutes and then I could see the extract stack in create complete status. If I move to the resources section and search for step, I could see this step function state machine in running state. This step function runs end-to-end -end orchestration for the extract process for the time interval that I mentioned while creating the CloudFormation stack. It would first check if the source cluster is up and running. Then it would take a snapshot if that doesn't exist and the snapshot name would be RE3 migration evaluation snapshot followed by the cluster identifier. It then uploads the cluster metadata like number of nodes, node type and workload management settings to the extract S3 bucket. Then it runs the simple replay extract process to extract the SQL statements from Redshift audit logging bucket. This may take just few minutes to complete and then we can start with the replay process. Here are the resources used by the replay process which is also orchestrated using step function and lambda functions. It creates two Redshift clusters, one with the exact configuration as the source cluster which we call replica and another cluster with RE3 instance type. It has two EC2 instances with simple replay deployed on them which run the process in parallel to replay my past workload and push the query performance metrics to another Amazon S3 bucket. To deploy the replay process, I'll go back to cloud formation and create stack with new resources. I'll need to select the file that I downloaded from GitHub. And then I need to give a stack name, which I'll call Redshift Replay. And for these parameters, I would need to go back to cloud formation and copy these values from the extract cloud formation stacks output section. I open the stack for Redshift Extract and if I go to Output, I can see these parameter values. I'll need to copy paste them for the replay stack. I'll start with account number, then extract bucket, the cluster endpoint. My cluster is KMS encrypted, so I also need the KMS key, otherwise it would be not applicable. My master username is AWS user and my database name is dev. I'll change the node count to 4 as I would like to test with RA34XL4 nodes. This is an important parameter. Grant S3 read only access to Redshift. If I select yes, it would grant S3 read only access to the new Redshift clusters, meaning our Redshift clusters would be able to read any S3 file on this account, which is useful to replay the copy commands. If I select no, then I would need to manually grant permissions to all relevant S3 locations from where I would like to run the copy statements. I would leave it as yes. And then I would need to select a VPC and a subnet within that VPC. I will go ahead with a private subnet. I also need to select a key pair. And then the rest of the parameters I would leave the defaults and click next. I would acknowledge the IAM creation and hit create stack. This template would also take about 5 minutes and then it would be in create complete state and then I can move to the resources section and search for step. Then I would be able to navigate to the step function state machine for replay process. This process would also be in running state. I can open the state machine and can see this state machine is in running state. This state machine is divided into two sections. The first section is to create two Redshift clusters 
called target and replica. Target refers to the RE3 cluster and replica refers to a cluster with the same configuration as the source cluster. Both would have the same parameter group and workload management settings as the source cluster. After creating the clusters, it would set up some metadata objects to facilitate comparison between these clusters. If I navigate to the Redshift console, I could see it's provisioning two new Redshift clusters with replica and target as the cluster suffix. If the RE3 configuration we selected is compatible for elastic resize, this setup step may finish within 15 minutes. But if it needs a classic resize, then it may take multiple hours to set up the RE3 cluster. After the setup steps are complete, it would run the replay process in parallel in both the clusters. The simple replay process preserves the time interval between queries and transactions to mimic the exact workload from the source cluster. So it would take about the same time as the duration between start and end time that I provided while running the extract process. If I go back to my extract state machine and click new execution, I could see the previous run was done for this one hour interval, 1730 to 1830. So the replay process would take close to one hour to rerun my workload. One important thing to add here, if I need to rerun this process for a different time interval, I only need to change the start time and end time here and then rerun this extract state machine. Once finished, you may rerun the replay process to get results for the new interval that you might have put in in the extract process. You may follow the same to test different workload management configurations as well, meaning you need to rerun the extract process followed by the replay process. You may also like to rerun the test with your most recent dataset. For that, you need to delete the new Redshift clusters, the replica and target, and then you'd also need to delete the snapshot with name RE3 migration evaluation snapshot. If I delete this snapshot and also delete the new Redshift clusters, and then rerunning the extract step function would auto create a latest snapshot and then restore the Redshift clusters from that snapshot. You may also use a snapshot from the past by deleting this snapshot and copy a previous snapshot with the same name RE3 migration evaluation snapshot followed by the source cluster identifier. The replay process got succeeded now and I could see it took close to 1 hour and 10 minutes to complete this process. Now I'll review the results. For that I would need to log in to the RE3 cluster. You can see this Redshift cluster target which is my RE3 cluster. I'll use SQL Workbench to connect to it. I'll create a new connection. Target RE3. Select Redshift driver. I'll copy the JDBC URL and then I'll put the user ID and password for AWS user. So one more thing to note is the user ID and password here is same as the source Redshift cluster, meaning I'll put the password for AWS user of my source Redshift cluster. If you want to log in with your user ID, you just need to put your user ID and the password which you use to log in to the source Redshift cluster. Here I'd run this statement, select star from source target comparison. This view gives the end result summary of the extract that we just ran. As I replayed my workload for an hour interval, I can see there are three active users during that window. AWS user ran 46 queries, which completed in 95.84 seconds. And that was for the replica. In the target, it took 86.25 seconds, which is the RE3 cluster. Meaning with RE3, it saved 9.59 seconds in total for AWS users queries. Same is the story for Manish and here it saved 0.27 seconds with RE3. But Srinath ran total 38 queries but with RE3 it took 0.588 seconds more as compared to the replica DS cluster. And that's why my mean is 1.38 with RE3 versus 1.23 with the replica cluster. If I scroll right, I can go to the median and in median, I can see that with RE3, it just took 0.09 seconds to run most of the queries, meaning 
50% of my queries took just 0 0.09 seconds on average with RE3 versus it took 0.14 seconds with DS2. If I want to dive deep into the queries that are taking longer with RE3, I can explore another view, source target comparison raw. This view gives the query level comparison between my clusters. All the timing here are in microseconds. So I need to divide it by 1 million to get the values in seconds. And then I'm ordering it by the difference between the replica and target clusters time. So I can see these are the primary queries that took longer with the target RE3 instance. And most of these queries took actually shorter time with RE3. If I want to know the reason on why it took long, I can scroll right and I can see that most of the time taken by the target cluster was to compile the queries. As query compilation happens only for the first time a query is run on a cluster, we can consider it as a one-off issue. To be double sure, I may rerun the extract and replay process again and then review the results. Ideally, it should give me significant improvement over the run that I just did. That primarily summarizes the reason on why it took longer for Srinath's queries to run on RE3 instances and at the same time I can see the end results in quite seamless manner on how my past workloads would perform with RE3 as target. Apart from that if you are using manual workload management settings currently you may consider moving it to auto which is our recommendation for most customers. The default parameter settings for this test would be same as your source production cluster but if you may like to have auto workload management settings for the RE3 cluster you simply need to change the workload management mode and save it and then rerun the test. That would rerun the test using auto workload management as compared to manual WLM which might be your current production settings. Also for extract and replay we recommend testing different time intervals. For example my initial run was done just for this one hour window. I may change it 1530 to 1730 and then rerun the extract process. That would rerun the extract process and then I need to rerun the replay step function and that would populate different test results in my source target comparison and source target comparison raw tables. And then I could take a snapshot of it and compare how much improvement or degradation I had on this change on replica versus target. That summarizes my demo on how to use simple replay utility to do what if analysis primarily to evaluate RE3 versus your current instance configurations. Thank you.